Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm KRX. This is the city that we built during the uh, beginner series on the channel. And today we're going to be looking at a mod, movement mod. And we're going to be doing just a quick sort of beginner tutorial on the movement mod. And I'm going to try to make this relatively concise. We'll see how I do on that. But we have this area set up over here to play around with the movement mod. So once you have the movement mod successfully installed, you subscribe to it on the workshop and you've activated it in the content manager in the main menu of the game. You're going to have this little icon down here in the bottom right. So if we open up this icon, it's going to open up this menu and it should default to the single selection tool. So basically, what does move it do? Move it lets you move stuff. It's, it's pretty basic. You can move anything in the game. You can shift its position once you've built it, once you've placed it. And you can shift things in the game that are already there, too. That's that's what's so crazy about it. You build it, then you move it. Um, if we if we try to move our mouse over these roads and stuff and the trees and everything, you'll see that there's no feedback, right? There's feedback over the, the clinic here because this is a building we can click on and we can get some information about this clinic. And the power station, same, right? It opens up a menu. There's feedback. There's no feedback on the roads or anything, though. With move it, if we have move it open, we have this menu open right here. We're going to notice, and if, you know, being on the single selection tool, we're now going to start getting feedback when we hover over things. Blue means that we're just kind of like running our mouse over it, right? Either the, the junctions, the trees, the segments of the road, so on and so forth, right? And even the buildings. Green means we've sort of locked on. So now we've locked on to that segment, so on and so forth. We can use the arrow keys to kind of move things around once we've locked on. We can use control Z and we'll probably, I'll probably stress that in a couple times to undo something. But for the most part, the way that I'm going to use this is I'm going to keep it on the single selection tool. I'm going to grab something that I want to move or bend. Uh, and then I'm just going to kind of move it around. There we go. So we can kind of create different angles here. Maybe we want to bend that out. Maybe we don't want to bend it out. Maybe we want to bend it the other direction. Maybe we want this to be a really sharp um, little segment here, which, you know, you couldn't make something like this in the base game, right? So that's kind of interesting. We can grab trees. We can move them around. Rocks even. And buildings even. In fact, if you take a building, or just anything really, and you can hold, instead of holding left click to shift this around, you can hold right click and twist it. Like that. So, you know, we could we could twist it like this. Of course, it's going to complain about not having road access if we twist it like that, but something like that would be fine. It'd be totally fine with this. There's certain areas where you might want it at a bit of an angle. Um, so that's kind of neat. We can move this a little bit closer if we want to. We can move water pipes. We can move uh, trains. We can move anything we want in the game. One cool thing we can do is we can actually raise and lower stuff too, right? So we can page once we've got something selected, like this this intersection here. We can raise this up with page up, lower it back down with page down. That can be, and because these are already stuck to the ground, it's going to hold. It's going to stay stuck to the ground. It's going to pull the earth up. So you can actually create these, you know, nice little sort of uh, kind of dike style roads, I guess. Which is kind of cool. And you can try to level things out and smooth stuff out. Maybe we want this to be a little bit smoother of an up. See how that's kind of steep like that? And that's kind of the base game nonsense. We could smooth that out. We can make that really, really nice. Look at that. Look at that. Then we could, you know, we could we bend the, the point at which this curves a little bit. We could fold this around. Looking good, looking good. So now we have a nice smooth slope with a slight curve and we could keep building from there if we wanted to. We could keep adding to that road if we needed to. So page up and page down is amazing. You, again, you can use it on elevated bits or non-elevated bits and it's gonna work the same. You can use that also on buildings. So we can see that this is a little bit goofy. Let's, let's actually lower this down a little bit with page down. That kind of brings that. Now this is really looking kind of silly, but we can lower that back down and now this is all flat and we can come in with the smoothing tool with the terraforming smoothing tool and we can make that look a lot better a lot more natural but we see because we've leveled the road uh, we've made this building kind of sit on the road in a more natural sense than what it would have been let's do Control z to bring that back and just kind of bring back all of our changes there Control z three times brings back our three different changes and there you go you kind of we can kind of compare the difference between how it looks now, which is kind of, you know, just this is the base game kind of nonsense. It looks kind of silly how it's kind of bent down here, but uh, we can fix that with move it if we want to. The last thing that I think we can do with the couple, actually, there's a couple more things that we can look at with the single selection tool without even getting into any of the advanced features. Advanced features, we'll talk about that in a, in a second episode. This one, I want it to be very basic, very concise. If you just have move it, it's good to have it in your back pocket. Good to have it just when you think about it. Don't worry about, you know, using it at every single moment, but just having it 
as a tool in your back pocket when you think of an idea that you something you want to tweak a little bit it's good to have and really the single selection tool is going to be what you need 90 percent of the time so one thing that we can do that's cool though is we can actually grab multiple bits at the same time using the shift holding the shift key when we click on other nodes and things once we have all these things selected we can move them in a unit and this can be really really awesome this can be really really awesome we can also raise and lower these things at the same time which is really really cool too and like always control z brings back any any choices that we don't particularly like actually you can see it's actually undoing a lot of stuff over there um so being able to hit hold shift and click on this stuff is kind of a kind of a big deal there last thing to look at with the single selection tool is another one of these buttons over here and it's the toggle underground view so if we go to the underground view you can see we can no longer highlight roads that are above ground it's it's not letting us grab any of these things we've already selected this one that's still selected we can use the arrow keys to kind of move that around but for the most part what we can do now is we can select stuff underground so we can you know we can move this stuff around that's uh, that's underground and you know if we needed to smooth these out or adjust these slopes or anything or whatever we needed to do and heck the game will let you do whatever the heck you want if you want to bring it up like this you can as goofy as that is right we can do that if we want or we could just control z and get that out of there so the under the toggling to underground mode really helps you kind of find what you're looking for with the move it tool because otherwise it'd be very very hard to like kind of like grab the right nodes and stuff but with this it it just means that you can't not grab the right modes it's pretty great all right so the last thing is there's this really annoying little tip box right here this might be good to kind of look through but it's just random tips i don't, I don't like this at all so if we go into the options menu the last little bit to look at for move it is you can see that you can customize all of these hotkeys and there's a bunch of hotkeys i didn't even talk about because i don't use any of these hotkeys but if you'd like to kind of learn these hotkeys or if there's any of these that you wanted to know a hotkey for you can actually set them yourself in here we can hide the tips right there which is really really nice and there's some other settings in here that you can play around with if you like so that's kind of the uh, move it mod that's the move it mod 2.4 that's the newest version of it as of this video and this is a there's a tons of new features with this uh, version of the move it mod so a lot of the older tutorials are just completely out of date because this entire menu has been completely reworked but there's tons more like advanced features in here that aren't even that difficult but they're just kind of too much for uh for a complete uh, beginner uh, tutorial we're trying to keep this nice and concise so thank you so much everybody for watching if you have questions please leave them in the comments or you know just visit me on the uh, twitch stream i love talking about this stuff to, to new players and old players alike um, so please hit me with all the questions guys thank you so much and uh, i will see you guys in the next episode which will hopefully be a another tutorial for move it but looking at some of these other features that we didn't cover Oh, thank you so much, everybody. I will see you guys in the next one.